Good afternoon. So my name is uh, Frederik Lelou, together with my uh, colleague Jan Oudenaert. Uh, I'm working at the Light and Lighting Laboratory, which is a research group of uh, KU Leuven in, uh, in Belgium. And today I will uh, give you uh, some information on a study that we did, that we did um, in collaboration with some uh, national metrology institutes about six years ago on the repeatability and reproducibility of uh, specular gloss meters in uh, theory and practice. So this uh, study was part of the XD Reflect uh, project uh, entitled Multidimensional Reflectometry for Industry, which was a project that we uh, performed uh, with eight national metrology institutes um, in 2013-2015. It was a project in Europe at call uh, for industry of 2012. So in this call, the link to industry has to be uh, given and how the, the new dimensions and quantities can be um, defined in relation to the purposes for industry have to be um, to be taken into account. So in the project, we uh, concentrated on three different uh, quantities, goniochromatism, gloss and fluorescence. But at that time, uh, universities as, as us which were not or are not designated institutes were not uh, automatically uh, um, allowed to take part in this kind of uh, project so i had to apply for a researcher excellence grant uh, which i did on the on the topic of gloss or surface gloss in which i investigated more um, alternative optical measurement methods to characterize gloss in correlation with the visual uh, assessment of it the visual gloss perception so, and uh, as one of the subtasks in the uh, grant and in the application uh, was a determination of agreement between uh, gloss meter results, which we performed in uh, 2015 and uh, 2016. Sorry. So the link to industry was here uh, uh, present. So we we assessed how different gloss meters corresponded uh, to each other. Okay, so this study consisted of two parts. The first part was a practical assessment, which I will present now. And the second part, a reason for I uh, already mentioned Jan, was a theoretical assessment based on ray tracing simulations, which uh, will be presented by Jan after this uh, presentation. So in fact, it's one larger study, which if you, after our presentations are uh, interested in, you can uh, look at in the, the reference in the journal uh, of coating technology and research, which was um, accepted in 2016. Maybe just because I have the occasion, I want to um, give as an information that I'm also together with uh, Gael co-chairing uh, a joint technical committee of CIE, the International Commission on Illumination on Gloss Measurement and Gloss Perception. Um, the technical committee has been uh, Live for about two years now, not practically, uh, not that um, active at this moment. But since I have many people here uh, present, maybe you want to uh, participate if you have some good uh, research uh, and input that can be given for this uh, technical committee. You are welcome uh, to contact me to contact me. Sorry, later after this uh, presentation. OK, so let's go into uh, the study details now. Of course, the first part, the practical assessment consists of uh, looking at the comparison between specular gloss meters. So as a first action point, we have, of course, to collect some uh, measurement instruments with whom, I, with whom we can um, do the measurements. So we contacted different uh, distributors and manufacturer of uh, specular gloss meters and collected six different uh, types of gloss meters, which uh, you can see here in this uh, table, which come from three different manufacturers, Big Garner, Row Point, and uh, Zeitner. As you can see in this table, uh, on the exception of one instrument, all other five uh, measurement instruments uh, measure gloss at the three defined uh, geometries, which were all already presented in the former uh, presentations, and also repeatability and reproducibility values have been reported by the instrument manufacturers. At the time of measurements, the calibration uh, was traceable to BAM in uh, Germany, which, uh, as I understand, is now not uh, possible anymore. OK, so just uh, have a look maybe at this repeat, repeat, repeatability sorry, and reproducibility values, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 as a, as a range. Uh, we will come back to uh, these values uh, later in the presentation. 
Besides uh, instruments, we need, of course, samples to do the measurements. Uh, so uh, within the project, also a glass scale was manufactured, uh, consisting of 40 glass samples. This was done by CNAM in collaboration with uh, Saint-Gobain. So um, Gael may uh, say more about the manufacturing of these uh, glass samples, if, if you wish, afterwards. So these glass samples differed based on three uh, different parameters, the lightness, so there were white, gray, and black samples, the refractive index of the glass samples, and the roughness, three roughness levels were applied in order to get different uh, gloss, a different glossiness range. From the 40 glass samples, we um, we uh, took out 25 samples based on a visual inspection on the uniformity of, of the reflection and on, on the gloss of the sample. So 25 samples were selected and their uh, gloss value spanned the range of two to 110 gloss units in the 60 degree uh, geometry. In order to compare the results, we made um, a series of five measurements. Uh, in each measurement geometry for the five devices and only in the 20 degree geometry for the row point IQ flex 20 since it's only measuring in that uh, geometry. And we uh, also assess the uniformity and directionality by uh, taking the average value and uh, calculating the coefficient of variation and by performing two out of the five measurements with the gloss meter rotated for 90 degrees uh, to assess the directionality. Reproducibility and reproducibility were uh, assessed based on the definition given in the ASTM standard. So for repeatability, the agreement between two results from single determinations were uh, compared and we check this by uh, taking the larger difference between the five readings for each sample and each instrument that we used. For reproducibility, it was kind of the same procedure. Agreement between two results were compared, but now being the average of three consecutive readings with an instrument obtained on the same specimen, of course, but with different instrumentation. And here we looked at two different uh, aspects. We looked here at the maximum difference of the average uh, values based on all six measurement instruments. And we also looked at the differences between each two uh, instruments, which I denote here as an instrument X and an instrument and an instrument Y. The measurements or the repeatability and the reproducibility were both checked in the recommended measurement uh, geometry. So I will come back to that uh, in a moment. Just for your information, I want to give here the uh, test specimens and their specular gloss in the 60 uh, degree geometry. We have this 25 test specimen. The, uh, the glossiness range from 2 to 110 in 110 in the 60 degree geometry and based on what has already been said before the values or the levels of 10 and 70 gloss units we can divide divide the set into three different sets for which another geometry must be used to compare the results so for the high gloss samples with a, a value above 70 gloss units in the 60 degree geometry we consider the 20 degree geometry results for the mid-gloss level, we use the 60 degree geometry results, and for the mat samples, we use the 85 uh, degree uh, measurement results. In order to check the repeatability and reproducibility, we again adhere to the ASTM standard in which the maximum accept acceptable differences uh, for two results are uh, given in a table. So you see here, depending on the glossiness or the gloss geometry for painted samples, we have here repeatability thresholds and reproducibility thresholds as stated. You can see here that this is repeatability for single determinations, reason why we, we opted for uh, doing this uh, kind of, or taking this kind of procedure. For reproducibility, it is a means of three determinations as we also did. Since we were talking about the ISO and ASTM standard, I have um, 
incorporated here just about uh, 10 minutes ago, uh, another slide in which these acceptable differences for results for repeatability and reproducibility are also given for ISO. And you may see that here there are some differences between how it is defined within the two standards. So first of all, repeatability and reproducibility in ISO are both given for mean values of three uh, measurements. So there is a difference in the repeatability or how the repeatability is assessed in ASTM, which is based on a comparison of single determinations, and in ISO, which is on a comparison of average values from three uh, determinations, respectively. You also see that the limits for repeatability and reproducibility are not uh, directly equivalent within the two uh, standards ASTM here. 1.720.9 and 6.47.2 going here for instance from 4 to 2. Another aspect uh, that I included here just to to be aware of is that the uh, angle angular apertures um, the uh, tolerances uh, are also different for the source image in ASTM and ISO although they are not that different, but you see here that the tolerance on the source image is 0.25 and 0.5 in plane and perpendicular to the plane of measurement, while for ISO, the stated um, tolerance is only 0.1 uh, degree. Referring to what Luke said, if we have for the 0.25 and 0.5 uh, degree tolerance in, in millimeter, I think I was in the range of 0.1 or even lower millimeter. I think these values may be hard to to get, but that's something that you may be more uh, aware of than me. OK, so let's move on to the measurement results and we will first look at the repeatability uh, results. So what you see here in this table is the sample number, which is uh, going to uh, from mat sample for uh, sample one towards the most glossy sample for for sample 25, and then the repeatability, which is here stated as the maximum difference between uh, two measurements made with the same instrument on the same uh, specimen. And when you what you'll see here is that some, only four in fact, numbers are in black, all the others are in red, which means that they are, are above the threshold that has been defined in the ASTM uh, standard. So you see that for the uh, 20, uh, sorry for the 85 degree uh, measurement condition which is sample one to seven then for the 60 degree geometry measurement condition to sample 14 and for the 20 degree geometry condition all these values are actually above the thresholds uh, values uh, stipulated in the standard um, i have here highlighted four samples samples 8 9 10 and 11 since you may I think, of course, that the uniformity of the gloss on the sample might not be that uh, good. And in fact, we uh, we looked at that. And indeed, for samples 8 until 11, um, the coefficient of variation was more than 50%. Uh, so uh, we, we should have or look carefully at these results. And you also see that these values are higher than, uh, than the other values. So the non-uniformity of the sample has uh, here and this value is certainly an influence. But is it is not the case for the other values. So in fact, these values are uh, quite surprising in that sense that they are uh, uh, relatively uh, elevated uh, with respect to uh, reproducibility or repeatability values that are stated by uh, the manufacturers. So on the exception of these four samples that I said, the, in fact, the samples showed good uniformity, and uh, you will see that in, a, in another slide uh, later on in the presentation, that it will, is, can be confirmed based on the correlation between uh, measurement results uh, based on two different uh, instruments. And we see also from the general picture that the repeatability is generally inferior to what the manufacturers uh, state, and also to what is uh, recommended uh, in the standards. So in fact, for each instruments, although here these values are the maximum deviations that I uh, um, give in this table, even for each instrument, at least 20 out of the 25 samples, the specified uh, repeatability results are above the threshold uh, values given in the standard. 
So likewise, we did a comparison for the reproducibility, and you see that the measurement results are here somehow better, especially for the MAT samples here. Reproducibility is uh, better, but when we go to uh, higher gloss uh, levels, you see that reproducibility is again inferior, and especially in the 20 degree uh, geometry, the results are uh, worst. So again, in red are the values that are higher than um, the threshold values that have been uh, stated in the standards. And we may maybe come uh, refer to uh, what Clarence said in one of his uh, slides. So due to maybe some deviations, you could see from the derivative that uh, differences uh, on high gloss samples will maybe um, have a larger effect on, on the low gloss samples. So that might be one of the reasons for a higher numbers that are reported here for the high gloss samples than here for the low gloss samples, although these have been uh, measured in a, uh, another uh, geometry in the 85 degree uh, geometry. So also here you see that the agreement is worst uh, for the 20 degree geometry, so the high gloss samples. Uh, for which we shifted to the 20 degree geometry, better for the 60 degree uh, geometry and best for the 85 degree geometry. But when we look at each combination, since this again are the average results for all instruments, so in fact the, the worst combinations, but when we look at different uh, combinations of two instruments, um, of the six instruments and look then at the uh, comparison of the results, we see that in fact only for three out of the 15 combinations of two gloss meters, all the differences between the gloss meter results are inferior, inferior to the uh, threshold uh, values. So the agreement is good, you might say, for only three combinations of two gloss meters out of the, the 15. And the best agreement was found for two gloss meters that uh, are made by the same manufacturer, which showed on average a difference of 0 0.8, 6 and 5 gloss units in the different uh, gloss measurement uh, geometries respectively. Note, uh, however, that uh, this was not the case for the other manufacturers, so we, we might have thought that yeah, the best agreement could be uh, found for each combination of gloss meters from the same manufacturers, but this was not the case. So for the other two manufacturers, the differences between their two instruments results uh, were again above thresholds for different of the 25 uh, samples. OK, and so this uh, brings me to uh, the last part of the practical uh, assessment, which is um, looking at the correlation between uh, results. So what you see in this graph is in fact all the measurements uh, values for a 25 sample for each combination of instruments, so average samples of instrument X plotted against the average results for instrument Y. And you see here uh, that actually normally we would um, think about a linear correlation between the instruments, although a linear correlation uh, has been put in, in question by some uh, researchers over the past uh, 20 uh, years. These are all the measurement results. Um, I thought uh, that for one manufacturer, uh, two instruments gave a pretty good agreement, and this is the, the result of the average instrument results of what I call here gloss instrument A and gloss instrument B, which are indeed the two instruments of uh, same manufacturer. You see here a clear correspondence between the measurement uh, results. And so, in fact, based on this, you, you might expect a linear correlation. And in fact, for all these other samples, we could correct the instrument readings of one instrument to the instrument readings of the other instrument based on the linear correlation. And so if we do so, I did so here as an example for two uh, instruments, you can see here what uh, happens with the reproducibility values from before applying a linear correction and after applying this correction and you see that before there are nine out of the 25 uh, samples for which threshold values are not uh, reached so they are above these threshold values and of course the average difference is lowered is it goes from 4.5 to 3.2 uh, gloss units but although it is on average going down you see that for some samples there is still some um, 
there are still some difficulties in that the, the values are above the, the thresholds that uh, are defined in uh, ASTM D523. So this linear collect, uh, correction is um, working on the partly, so, but it, it does not give a satisfactory um, a solution to uh, the problem. So um, in result or as a conclusion for uh, this practical uh, assessment, you've seen that we have checked the repeatability and reproducibility between uh, instruments and uh, ger generally both are inferior to the specified uh, recommendations. Um, also, the statement that the best agreement is obtained or would be obtained with two instruments from the same manufacturer, manufacturer cannot be uh, generalized, although it was the case for one uh, combination. And the correction of the results based on the linear correlation gives some uh, benefits, but although the threshold limits uh, are not uh, reached over the entire span of uh, the glossiness range. So this concludes, in fact, the, the first part of uh, this study. And what we did further is uh, looking at some uh, ray tracing simulations. So we thought um, when we are now theoretically assessing um, the optical geometry of a glass meter and we apply some BRDFs, are we able, based on the tolerances on the receptor aperture, projection lens, position of lenses and approaches, etc. Are we able to um, define the tolerances on the gloss units based on the glossiness level of uh, the samples? And so you see here just uh, what we did within this study uh, for um, uh, the reference sample and one low mid gloss sample, which is part of the 25 samples of the uh, glass sample set that was manufactured for this uh, study. But uh, we also did a general uh, assessment of this uh, based on uh, what is uh, given in the definitions of uh, ASTM. And this is what my uh, colleague Jan Oudenaert will present in the next uh, presentation. So I don't know if you have already questions on uh, this presentation or do we keep maybe the uh, questions for uh, after the presentation of Jan is uh, it's like you wish. Thank you.